So, you guys, today is the anniversary of the death of Emmett Till. Emmett Till was a 14-year-old African-American boy who was lynched in Mississippi for allegedly um, looking and whistling at a white woman. White woman, I think recently in the past few years, has come out and said that was a lie. Emmett Till's mother, in order to garner sympathy from the other citizens of this country, had the press at her 14-year-old son's funeral with an open casket so that they can see what they did to him. Because not only, I believe, did they uh, lynch him, but they dragged him as well, I believe. That's something that they apparently, you know, like to do to us. And 65 years ago today, this happened. And I'm talking to you again about another racially charged death by the hands of a white person. And it is Jacob Blake. Jacob Blake is the most recent of black men, black people, to be murdered on camera by police officers. Right now, activists are gathering today at the Lincoln Memorial to commemorate the historic Civil Rights March on Washington and demand police reform. Jacob Blake was a 29-year-old man and he was living in Kenosha, Wisconsin. When he was stopping a fight between two women and the police were called, the police showed up, guns drawn. I believe he told them he had a knife in his car. He turned around and went to the car, opened the door, and a white police officer by the name of Rustin Shesky shot him seven times in the back like he was trying to kill a cockroach who would not die. I've seen a lot of people come up with reasons as to why this was okay, but this was not okay. And we've all seen so many times where white people are allowed to damn near murder the police and still are able to be detained and brought to jail without incident. So we know it's because you don't care about our lives, which is why we say black lives matter because you don't think that they do. And then when we say this, you tell us all lives matter in this like social mind as if we don't know you're saying it in order to piss us off even more. You know exactly what we're saying. It's not lost upon you. This, this mind that we take part in in America as being black and living here and allowing y'all to, you know, continue to brutalize us in such a way. It is getting tiring. We are tired of talking. We're tired of giving you think pieces and telling you which movies to watch and labeling things Black Lives Matter on Amazon Prime so that you will gain or garner some sympathy for us. But I'm not sure how long it's gonna go down this road. I'm not sure how long we're going to, you know, peacefully try to resist. Especially when you have people who are taking countermeasures to show up and, and, and kill and murder protesters to protect buildings and not people. Or to protect the police officers who have guns and are doing the killing and don't really necessarily need the protection because they have the protection of the government. They don't need protection from militant 17-year-old vigilantes who think they're doing someone a favor by showing up to a protest with an AR-15 police gave him water thanked him for being there in support of them as if someone did something to them today did I forget to mention that Jacob Blake was actually handcuffed to a hospital bed currently being shot seven times in the back did not kill him but it did paralyze him from the waist down so I don't know where they think he's going to go but it's even more dehumanizing to handcuff him to a bed as if he has the possibility of lifting his body out of that bed and doing something or going somewhere. You've taken that from him, yet you handcuff him as if he's supposed to sprout the, the, the spinal control and walk out of the fucking hospital room. He had a knife in his car. If he had only been shot once or twice, maybe that would suffice as a reason, but it doesn't. They knew he had a knife. He shot him seven times in the back 
at close range. You were trying to kill him, stump him out. You weren't trying to de-escalate. You weren't trying to do your job, just like the police officers that were out there at the protest weren't trying to do their jobs. So the sheriff gets up there after this 17-year-old psycho shoots and kills two other white men, not black men, white men who put themselves in a line of fire with his AR-15 in order to stop him from shooting and killing the people who were out there. The police stood by and did, and did nothing. They did nothing. Almost as if they were in cahoots. Did I mention, I think the little boy's name is Kyle, 17. It's illegal for a 17-year-old to have a weapon. He had that weapon, was brandishing it out in front of the police officers and they did nothing but offer him water, didn't ask for ID because he was a young white man. So him having an AR-15 and being white was okay. But us walking around black, oh my God, let's kill that, let's shoot that. Let's murder that on national television and then be able to retain our jobs, be able to continue to work and live as if we didn't kill someone and add a ripple effect of emotional, of emotional trauma to everyone that looks like this person. So Kyle Rittenhouse, y'all, Kyle Rittenhouse is a 17 year old who purchased the AR-15 and his mother drove him to Kenosha, Wisconsin, where they were going to have this protest so that he could protect the businesses and the police officers. Because apparently there are a lot of people trying to protect police officers as if they need it. To me, it just sounds like an opportunity for y'all to kill black people um, without uh, any, any discourse, without any justice, because somebody said, oh, look, you can be a cop, so you can just be out here and kill people, because that's what y'all are doing. Cell phone videos from the demonstration Tuesday night showed Rosenbaum approaching the teen who was carrying an AR-15 style rifle. According to the charging documents, and Rosenbaum appeared to throw a plastic bag at him before the latter opened fire. Rosenbaum was struck several times. So he threw a paper bag at you, a plastic bag at you, a plastic bag, and you shot him. And, and y'all think that's reasonable. Something's wrong. <laughs> Something's wrong if you think that's reasonable. After the shooting, people followed the teen, identifying him as the shooter to authorities. The document said among them was Huber, who was carrying a skateboard in one hand and trying to grab the teen's gun with the other. The teen opened fire, killing Huber. The document said in an interview Thursday, Huber's friend, Tim Kramer, 26, called him a hero, someone who saw a shooter and put his life on the line to try and stop him. Maybe Huber wasn't the smartest for attacking someone with a gun but his heart was pure and he had good intentions and he did not deserve to die Kramer met Huber in middle school in Kenosha and recalled that his skateboard was an extension of his own body I have never seen him without it he said he wasn't career oriented he just wanted to skate Kramer, who moved to Racine to work as a press operator, said he hadn't been in touch with Huber lately, but never knew him to be an activist, nor does he believe Huber was involved in any of the violence or property destruction that have accompanied the protests. According to an online fundraiser, Huber left behind a stepdaughter and a girlfriend. Rosenbaum was from Waco, Texas, according to his Facebook profile, and was engaged to be married. So these two people who were just out there, you know, for the protests, and they see this kid walk up with this gun. And I'm sure he cocked that gun at people. And they were like, is this dude really walking around with an AR-15? He's going to shoot somebody. Let's try to stop him. But you know what y'all think about? It's like I'm talking about some of these white people that have been in the comments. Like, why are y'all even on Mr. Checkpoint? Why are y'all on Mr. Checkpoint's Instagram page? Because y'all are trolls sitting up there talking about um, they were beating on him and he had to defend himself. You don't illegally purchase the AR-15 gun and then drive to out of state to a protest that has nothing to do with you in order to protect the police officers and then you end up killing people and somehow you're a victim? You're a victim. Maybe if the police would have done their jobs, none of that would have happened. But you know what the police chief said? Maybe if, if, if nobody was out during the curfew, this wouldn't have happened. Yes, blame the victims. Not the crazy ass 17 year old and his mom who drove him there in the first place. Oh no, don't blame them because this is the kid that America raised. 
If you want to hear the rest of the podcast, check me out wherever you check out podcasts. Google, Spotify, Apple, Breaker, Overcast, Radio Republic, everywhere. So please support and check out the Bondi Blue Show podcast and hear the rest of what I have to say about this week's topics.